one. Welcome back to the Makers Go Learn YouTube channel. We are so excited to be crafting with you at Yay. our regular scheduled programming. Yes. Back over the course of last year, if you're new here, we traditionally went live at noon Eastern. Mm -hmm. And I I really like eating lunch at noon. <laughs> no, we traditionally went live at 1.30 well, and then yes, moved it up to right. noon. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. the whole last year, we were going live at noon. Uh -huh. But from 2017 to 2022, 1.30 p.m. Eastern was our time to shop. Yes. And there is something so special about the Sacred Tom. It really is. So we have brought it back. It is amazing. This is gonna be so great for our schedule. If you all have missed the 1.30 p.m. Eastern live Tom, well, welcome back. We are bringing all of our live shows to that Tom. Mm -hmm. And with the new year, we are working incredibly hard to bring you these Wednesday shows at our top quality, yes. the best show. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask and invite each of you to do is to come join us every Wednesday Yeah. at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. This is gonna be our big show uh -huh. of the week where we wanna encourage you to kind of challenge you, like consider these shows now a mini boot camp. Yeah. Every Wednesday, you can take the inspiration and you can apply it to your crafting, which is super, super fun. Absolutely, and this is like, with us being live, this is your time to really kind of set aside so that if you have questions, yes. you can ask us questions. We're able to answer them live with you guys. Yes. So that's really why we wanted to put a bigger emphasis on just really bringing our full A game oh one my gosh. day a week. Yes, we are giving all to the show. And if you're a Makers Gonna Learn member, these live shows, you can get your questions answered. We will try our best to answer questions, mm -hmm. give you all the best and you're gonna get a lot on the other days throughout the week too. Our podcast will be launching very soon on Mondays. Yay! It's gonna be an hour of amazing. I mean, we're bringing in some of the best creatives. Mm -hmm. My goal with the podcast is to show y'all what the possibilities you have are, right? Like all the possibility, it's gonna be incredible. and It's gonna be super, super fun. So hello everyone. In a short video you did two days ago, um, you mentioned knockoff Cricut blades, but there was no link. So Angelique, there are a lot of different knockoff blades on Amazon. Use our Amazon link down below, search Cricut blades, and I would go the way, you wanna know my secret? You wanna know my secret tip for what? Amazon shopping? The reviews. Yeah. When I'm buying stuff blindly, mm -hmm. I look at which one has the most five-star reviews. Yes. And with Cricut Blades, you know, especially knockoff ones, that's the best way to do it. You know, what has more reviews, better ratings, I'm like trying that. to think of the brand name. I know where the box is out there. <laughs> I know exactly where they are. Um, and I may at some point run out there and yes, get them and get the I brand name for you. Super, super um, fun. But yeah, it really and truly, a lot of times, we will test different products, but I would say eight to nine times out of 10, yeah. what we obviously find the best is also Amazon's choice. Yes, they, we love it. They really do like, because those are the ones that have the best reviews. Yeah. So we'll be doing podcasting on Mondays. We'll be live with you on Wednesdays. Our new schedule, Lauren, seven days a week of content. Yep. There are so much goodness coming out. So stay tuned to the channel. We're making some really great videos. You're gonna see some really great mashup videos, bringing some of our best projects to refresh y'all's memory, um, which is super neat. Whether you wanna see our 25 Cricut hacks, Dollar Tree Cricut hacks that mm -hmm. are out, we have our Tumblr hacks that are out, and we have some other good ones. So you're gonna love watching those mashups in the background. We are taking a lot of your feedback this year. Yes. So you all have asked to not sell as much on the live shows. Mm -hmm. So we're really taking that into consideration and of course promoting and integrating our membership that allows us to do what we do here. Right. But of course respecting y'all in the meantime. So exactly. that is super, super fun. I'm so excited. We have lots of fun coming. The podcast is gonna be a great time for us to connect as well. So two hours a week minimum of brand new content. Plus we have at least two fresh videos that you've never seen each week. Yes. So it's hours. Where you're still getting hours of content from your makers and learn team which I love. So it's going to be awesome. Woohoo! You guys are awesome, awesome. Yay. And before we jump into the love, into the project, which we haven't even talked about the project. Oh, I have one Lord. more. I have one more announcement. Lauren has worked so hard on this project, y'all, okay? This project, listen, this is a project that I feel like I have been able to do in my sleep. 
Mm -hmm. um, it was one of those um, that I've done it so many times. Yes. I was like, Psh, that's going to be a breeze. <laughs> and I tried different aspects. Y'all, I have some yeah. really good information to bring you today. Ooh, Let me just say so, that. This project, if you've made a doormat like, I mean, Moon Lauren could make a regular doormat in our sleep. Mm -hmm. But when, if you're having issues or anything like that, you're going to want to come to the show and stick around because it is going to be action packed with the tips, the tricks, the if it's not working, what what's going wrong? Lauren's going to expose a lot of that today, yes. which is incredible. But before we head out into or jump into the project, I want to make sure that every single YouTube subscriber here that has been on the fence for membership, Lauren, this has been a big discussion in the office. It has been a very big discussion. We have reinvented our Makers Learn platform last year. We are adding, you know, a thousand cut balls a month now. Mm -hmm. Our team has been just working super hard to serve our members. So what is happening is February 1, there will be a price increase for only new members. Not for everybody. Let's if make that you, clear. If you are a member, you are locked in at your price. You're done. You've, you've got you're it. Done. <laughs> you're you got it. You've got it. But here's what I want to let y'all know about. I like to save everyone money. Mm -hmm. uh, always. That's why I talk about deals so often for our own products and other, you know, we're pretty minimal. We try to be, but our membership is going up and I don't want you to miss out because you could get in today and save a ton on membership. So membership, let me do some crazy math. So okay. membership regular price is $27 a month effective January or February, February 1. Okay. Or you can become a member today for $19.99 a month. Mm -hmm. That is very affordable. Or you can go yearly, which is less than $15 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll send you a free gift, yes. which is so good. It's our Cricut Reference Guide. You can lock in that low, low, low price of $15 a month, pay in full. Yeah. And then on February 1, everyone else is go pay $27 a month. Uh -huh. So if you have been considering membership, I just want to invite you to join because you're going to save so much money if you get in before February 1. You really are. So I'm just letting y'all know, no big deal. The value is still going to be there so much. Uh -huh. But just to let you know what the difference is on a year membership, you are going to save today. You're going to save over $130 going yearly today using the coupon code BEST compared to going yearly on February 1. And so I want to invite y'all, if you yeah. want to get the lowest price, if you want to get our cut falls, our fonts, our commercial lessons, the entire platform, the community, everything like that, it is going to be so good. If you've been thinking about getting the year membership, please do not wait. Our customer care is available for any questions you have. Mm -hmm. You get the 30 day challenge. It's been updated for our new curriculum. If you go yearly, we're physically mailing you. I saw Sadie has a big tub of all the new members who get the reference guide and the mystery gift. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting those just, just as a free gift if you join. Just as a thank you. Yeah. So it's super, super, super good. I do want to address why the price increase, right? We are investing so much more time, money, energy, effort mm -hmm. into the membership that we want this to be sustainable. We want to give back to our entire team. We want to keep everything growing. Um, and to do that with the way the world is, we you know, have never raised our rates over the course of our you know, five years being here. Um, yeah. So unfortunately it is Tom, I will say, I stand behind this price tenfold. You get so much, you so, really so do. much you really on do. the platform. The platform has everything you need and more. Yeah. It'll be a one-stop shop and we're just going to continue to make it better into the new year. So super, super, super exciting. How do I sign up for membership? Oh my gosh. So there's a link. It's the first link down below um, and it's pinned here on the chat. Use the coupon code BEST, B-E-S-T. Make sure you don't forget that coupon code. That will lock you in at a, you're going to save $40 today and you're going to save $40 every other year but you're going to save more than 40 because yeah, of the price true. increase. Yes. So you're going to save like over a hundred dollars a month or a year mm -hmm. with the price increase. So I am super, super, um, you know, excited because we launched this membership in 2017 with 30 cut falls, 30, 30 cut falls. That was it. Y'all, 30. <laughs> and it was $19.99 a month. So there's never been a price increase. There's 10,000 files 
1,000 fonts, a full Cricut training curriculum. I mean, a full silhouette. A silhouette. Oh, I mean, there's over 30 different classes you can take. Frame building, frame master. building master class. Gosh, there's so much. Oh, the. I mean, we have master classes every month for yep. members. We have the Facebook community. It's a whole family here. So we just yes. love it. Aw, uh, annual membership, so awesome community and freebies. It's a win-win. Aw, -win. Uh, thanks, Tr Tracy Lewis. Sadie Lewis's mother has been killing it with the cricket. Yeah, she really has. Uh, her projects are blowing me away. Uh-huh. Blowing me away. So we're super, super excited. And has been really active in our Facebook group, which is something else that we have. We have a Facebook group for our members where yes. you can share your project, ask questions, get feedback, um, all kinds of different things. And she's been really utilizing that. And I, I really think that that's taken her cricketing game to the yes. next level. We're going to have to bring her on the podcast and be like, Tracy, what has a cricket done for you? Yeah. I would love that. Tracy, are you game? I'm, I'm having be. Sadie on the podcast first. Sadie gets to be on first, but then you could be second. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shirley Witt, who has been a longtime fan and friend of the show, who I adore, uh -huh. she said, I have not been well for over a year and been hardly not active. So happy to be back. The membership is so worth it for all you get. Thank you, Miss Shirley. I'm glad you're doing better. And I'm so glad to see you. It brightens my day when we get to see you here on the show. Yay. Um, so it is super, super fun. So if you need anything, y'all, Get in while you can. I don't want to talk about it anymore because the project today is worth its weight in gold. And it's going to take a minute. It's going to be good. It's so, going to be real good. I love it. Well, let's jump into it because we got a okay. tip tip a daily day, right? Y'all, it's going to be good. So, are you ready to make a doormat with us today? If you are ready, drop me an emoji. Let me know you are here, ready to get started because y'all, we've got a lot. We have a lot, and I have a lot of different um, techniques that I'm going to be telling you, a lot of different fails that I had. Let me just tell you, I had so many fails with this project, and I don't, I, I, I don't know why, because like I said, this is something that I have, I feel like I could do in my sleep. I have done two or three of these on the show. Um, so these are super easy, but if you're not doing the right techniques can be hard and frustrating. So definitely, definitely stick with me today. Um, and I will help walk you through all of the different do's and don'ts, what to admit or what to avoid, things like that. So let's just go ahead, let me move some of this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna hold this one up. This one was one that I felt like I wanted to make a mat. So I started off wanting to make a mat that was colorful. Yeah. So colorful mats were really what I was going for. And as you can see, this one is pretty summery, very, um, very colorful. I really love that. So when I started, I thought, y'all, we can use spray paint. Great, I mean, great concept. Instead of using Flex Seal, let's use spray paint because we have such a wide variety of colors when it comes to spray paint and then seal it with a clear Flex Seal. My question Sounds would like be, a great idea, right? Why wouldn't you use spray paint? Because Flex Seal has been so faithful for us, I mean, for years. So let's talk about why you wouldn't use spray paint. So Flex Seal is, we've talked about this, it is in a spray paint can, but you can also purchase it other and like do the dab method. But it's a heavy, a heavy like rubbery paint. So really and truly it's, it lays on your stencil and gives you very nice crisp lines. The difference, spray paint is not as heavy. Like it's not as heavy of a material. So what I discovered and what happened was the spray paint kind of gave me a fuzzy look, like the lines yeah. were not crisp. What do, what do you? Okay, so I, before we invented this, why did, we didn't invent it, before we learned about the freezer paper technique, I worked for a paint company, mm -hmm. and a lot of times with spray paint, when you put a stencil down, and like I was pinning it down and stuff like yes. that, you would put a coat of spray paint, and you'd be like, Where, where's the coat? Because it's, so, it's thin, so thin, it soaks in to yeah. your mat. And you still see your bristles. They're not a different color. So right. yes, I just agree. Like it, it's a struggle. <laughs> yes. So 
that is where I was like, okay, we'll just do, we'll yes. just do spray paint. That's the where I ran into issues. Somebody also said Plex Seal comes in so many colors now. Yeah, it does. However, I'm going to be the first to tell you, not all colors are created equal when it comes to Flex Seal. I have, um, I got the white because I thought if this black is, I know how well black works on a doormat. The white on that doormat, oh my gosh, yeah. would be so beautiful, it's going to pop. <sighs> <laughs> no, no. Wow. For some reason, the white, and you all can see, I'll hold this up. Or actually, you can go overhead. I don't know, like, you can see that there is, like, a little bit of a white outline around this, the letters here. Um, that's because the white didn't work, and I had to go over with black. So, yes, Erica, Erica agrees. The white flex seal is horrible. It is the worst. Like, it's just not, yeah. it's not for me, and I tried it. Um, I have used the yellow as well. Um, the yellow, it did okay. It's not that it's bad, but for some reason, it's just not near as crisp. Um, but that's why we're going to talk about a couple different methods. So I tried the spray paint. Um, not a, did not work. Uh, tried the color, tried the white flex seal. Wasn't a fan. Um, also, did you guys know that freezer paper can go bad? Wow. I mean... I did not because we have had freezer paper. We have freezer paper out there. I've used it so many times. I used it back around Halloween to do a mat. Um, but, and it stuck perfectly. But when I was creating this mat, guys, I was ironing it down, had a heat setting of three. I even had to go back and watch my own video <laughs> to make sure I was doing it properly. No way. Doing it all the same. I knew it was correct. And it was not sticking. So I was trying to figure out, well, do I use a permanent vinyl? Like, what's going to work best for this? Because now my freezer paper, I thought for sure that the mats, something had changed with the mats. They had done some kind of chemical, yeah. put something on it. That's why it's not sticking. Really thought that, um, really thought that it was something to do with the mat. Had Sadie run out and get a new pack of freezer paper, tore off a piece, put it on the mat, so heated perfect. it up, didn't move. No way. Didn't move. So y'all heard it here first, freezer paper goes bad. Yes, freezer How paper can it? go bad. I mean, as far as, I don't know about going bad if you're using it for its intended purposes, but for our purposes of heating it up and getting it to stick to our doormats, um, yes, the for some reason, like, I think it's something to do with the plastic probably yeah. um, doesn't stick as well. So somebody asked, do we, is there a specific name for these doormats? These doormats are called core, C-O-I-R doormats. Um, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, um, but I also found that you can get the exact same one as I'm measuring, making sure exact same one from Walmart for like, I think it was like $5, 5 yeah. or $6. Hobby yeah. Lobby is like 10 or more. Wow. 10 if you catch it on sale, on the week that it's on sale. Um, yes, Brenda, it was the exact same brand of freezer paper both times. It Amazing. was the Reynolds Kitchen um, freezer paper. And it was so, the one we had was so old that the packaging had changed. <laughs> so that's how I was like, okay. Um, we keep it, humidity-wise, we keep it in a, it had been kept in a plastic container, like closed up, sealed. So I don't, I don't think that it would, that would have done something. But either, one, either way, if it's not sticking, that could be your issue. Because I did see somebody in our Facebook group um, that they said they were having issues with it sticking, so it wasn't working. Definitely go buy a new pack of freezer paper and see if that works uh, before you try something different, okay? So, what we are going to do today, I'm going to teach you how to measure your doormat, put it in Cricut, cut, um, we're going to cut a saying or some words, and actually I'm going to put that on our blank doormat, and then I'm going to teach you how I found best to add 
color to your doormat. So we are also going to be using um, acrylic paints. And this is the, I guess, the old way of how you all used to do yes. it. Um, but And you can still do it this way, but we are going to be sealing that with the clear flex seal so you get the best of both worlds. So you're going to learn how to use the black flex seal um, with ironing our words down and then I have some little accents, some leaves, palm leaves that we're going to iron on the other mat that I had already started and I'm going to show you the best practices for using acrylic paint and putting that on your doormat as well. Okay? Are you all ready to jump into the project? So let's go ahead and head over to Cricut Design Space. Now, one thing that I do know we are going to have to do before I get started is we're going to have to hop over to Makers Gonna Learn website. We are here in the font section. The font that I'm going to be using today is one of our newer fonts. It is not downloaded on this computer, so you all, if we have anyone here that doesn't know how to download a font from the Makers Gonna Learn website, we are going, I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. Now, one thing I do wanna say, we are using a Mac. It's very similar between Mac and Windows um, to download. So I'm gonna be using the font Fabulosity. We are going to download, all you have to do is click this little arrow that's pointing down right here. It is going to pull up in your downloads as a zip file. We're gonna open up that zip file. It's going to pull up here as a OTF. We're going to double click that and then install the font. And then it will pop in in your font book. We call it the font, Mac calls it a font book. If you have Windows, it's called the character map. That's just where you can go and see all of the fonts that you have on your computer. So now that we have that downloaded, we're gonna go back over to Cricut Design Space. And actually, before we even open up the canvas, I'm just going to come up here to the view and we're gonna reload because if you are downloading a font, um, you do have to reload Cricut Design Space. Although it's on your computer, it's not in Cricut Design Space unless you reload it. So we're going to reload Cricut Design Space and that will pull in that new font that we downloaded onto our computer. So now I'm gonna head over to my stuff. And don't forget y'all, you get a thousand fonts when you join Makers Learn today. So you have a ton to choose from, all with commercial use license where you can make money from your crafting with yes. that commercial license, which is amazing. Yes. So as you all can see here, I already have um, what the saying, what saying I'm putting on this mat here, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. So I'm actually just gonna delete this square out so that, and we'll, you know what, let's just delete this out. And we're gonna start from the beginning, how we're going to do this, how we're going to arrange everything. Um, so first thing you need to do is we're gonna come over here to the shapes and I'm going to grab a square and I'm going to come up here to our size and we're gonna unlock that. Now, we are working and the tag on our doormat tells us the dimensions. So we're working with an 18 by 30 inch doormat. So I'm going to type that in 30 by 18. It's a 30 inch width and an 18 inch height. That's gonna be your standard size doormat. And then I'm just gonna come up here and change the color. We're just gonna change it to brown because that's the color of our doormat. Now, what you're gonna do is you are going to grab the text, whatever text you plan on using. Um, I said we were using Fabulosity, so we're gonna come over here to our system fonts. And first of all, let me talk about this because in all honesty, I'm gonna tell on myself right here. I did not know that you could do this until me and Alicia did a live, I think it might have been last week, maybe week before last, must have been, I think it was last week, where she just did a very beginner like tour of Cricut Design Space, all of this stuff. Let's go back to Cricut Design Space. Did you all know that you can move your font thing around wherever you want it? So if you want it to pull up over here out of the way, you can do that. Used to, it would pull up right yes. here. And that's where it would stay. 
And a lot of times when you bring text in, it's up here in the top left-hand corner. So it would cover up your text. Okay, I don't think you're telling on yourself. I think this is new. Okay, well, you can move it, and every time you pull up a text and go to your fonts, wow. it pulls up wherever where the last it. place you left it. That's cool. And I personally am I'm, I'm obsessed with that because that way I can have it over here, and it's out of the way, and I can actually see the difference. Like, I can click on this one. Do I, like, for example, let's pull this down and make it bigger. So now I can, once again, pulls up over here where I left it. I can, in my system fonts, now I can click on, okay, that one doesn't look right. No, nope, not for me. You know, and you can test out all of these different fonts without it going away. So we're going to search the Fabulosity. Here it is. So everybody's saying this is new. They had no idea. So at least, you know, wow. I'm not the only one. So, I am. I have my text here. Now, all you're going to do is you are going to type in your what your what you want on your saying. Vibing and thriving is just my. That is what this year is going to be for me. Yes. And one other thing that I think I did with this is because I wanted a little bit more room between. Um, the word vibing and thriving. So I have two spaces here, and then I'm going to do two spaces here, and then thriving. Love it. There we go. Um, you can do like the letter and line spacing, or you could like individually place them if you want to do that. Um, that's completely up to you. One thing that I want to make sure you all know and understand is when we are working with these mats, we do have to keep this, we're working with a 12 by 24 inch mat. So we have to size our text down so it is less than 24 inches, okay? So 23.95 I think will work. I might have to go a little smaller than that. Um, but all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna size that down so that it does fit within a 12 by 20 or on a 12 by 24 inch mat. And then now I'm going to go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and jump into how I decided where I wanted or what sizes or what kind of leaves I wanted. And that way we can just go ahead and kind of design that here so that you can see how I did that. So if you wanted to do color and you want to put leaves or palm leaves or smiley faces, hearts, Christmas trees, right. literally whatever you want, we're going to go back over to Makers Gonna Learn and we're going to head over to our cut files. Now, there are so many different things that you can choose from. So I'm just going to type in leaves and that is going to pull up all of these different leaves. Here we have a philodendron. Um, the ones that I used, first of all, I just realized we're not signed in. Let's get signed in really quick. Look how easy it is to sign in. Look how easy it is. <laughs> and then we just go back to cut files. Amazing. Tina, thank you. Tina says Lauren has a great eye for font choices. I kind of learned that from Alicia. Alicia <gasps> is our font gal. Like I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shout out Alicia for that. Heck yeah. Um, she is the font queen. If I ever am like Alicia, I can't think. I know what font, and I explain to her what font I want, and I say, okay, I want a kind of like a sans serif font, but I want it a little more curly, like not yeah. as. And she's like, oh, there it is. I know exactly what it is, and she'll name it off, like rattle it off. So cut files was not loading for some reason. Here we go. Let's type in leaves again. And then I will show you exactly which one that I used for this. I actually used a pattern. So, and I'll show you how I separated those out. Um, it, we are going to be using the slice function. I know Tanner said at one point like, Actually, these tropical leaves would work really well, too. Love it. But the, let me show you exactly which one I used, but I think we're going to come back and we're going to download this tropical leaf pattern. But 
just so you all have the exact one. Let me see if I can find it. And that's not it either. <laughs> anyway, we'll go back because these would these will be perfect. So let's just go back to page three. And we're going to download these tropical leaves. Same as with a font, we're just gonna open up that zip file, make sure it unzips. It does have the PNG and the SVG. We're gonna come back over to Cricut Design Space. We're gonna hit upload. We're gonna upload the image. I'm gonna pull that down and then take that SVG, drag it and drop it here, and then pull Cricut back up upload that and done you are ready to go amazing so now that we have this I am going to what you can do okay so there's a couple ways you can do this if you wanted to bring in kind of the old way that we would do it is we would bring in a shape and then what you can do is choose that shape um, you can, let's say we wanted just this leaf right here. Um, let's unlock this shape so that we can try to get it where it's not covering up anything else. And we could just rotate it, make sure that it covers that up. And then what you can do is take your shape that you just chose and this, your tropical leaves cut file and then you can slice that out. That's kind of, I don't want to call it the old way of doing things, right? but that's one way that you can do that and you can slice. Another way that I have found sometimes is a little faster and works a little better is if you will just come up here and duplicate. So if we had five different thing, five different leaves in this cut file, we would duplicate it four other times. And what you can do is on each one, we're gonna go down here to contour, and then we're just gonna contour out the leaves that we don't want. So now we have this bottom one. So we're gonna come over here, duplicate this one again, contour it, we don't, we have that bottom one. We don't need those two. Now we have both of those. We'll duplicate this one more time. Then we're gonna contour this one. We need that middle one. And then finally, the last one, we need this one in the top right corner, contour. And boom, you have them all separate. Love it. Now some of our, some files you can ungroup and they're all separate, but if you can't, contouring or slicing them out really is the best way to go. So now that we have all of those separate, what we're gonna do now is you're just going to arrange these leaves however you want them on your mat. So if you want one to be a little bit bigger, you wanna turn it this way, um, then we might grab this guy, put him up here in the corner, turn him, make it a little bit bigger. Now, one thing that I want to make sure you guys know and understand is it's okay if I have, let's zoom in. For what I'm going to show you, it's okay if you have a leaf that sits off the edge of this mat. That's not gonna be a problem because the hack that I'm gonna show you when it comes to you know, creating a pattern, um, you don't, we're gonna cut these all, like they're all gonna be their own individual leaf and we're gonna come back, you can come back to your design and kind of see where you place them and go from there. It's a lot easier doing that than trying to cut it off when you have something that's larger than mat. So our mat or our doormat is 18 by 30. So it's kind of hard to separate, okay, I need from here over group together, here down group together, which you can do, but this kind of gives you more freedom to move it around if you decide later on, hey, that's not for me. Like, I think I want to use it over here. Okay. So you're so you're saying not to follow through with this? What do you mean? Do you need to So before before what we would do is we would like let's just say we place these three and that's right. what we wanted. We would come through and So you're going to manually place these after. Yes. So we don't have to worry too much. No. Okay. That's why I wanted this to show you This is part of the you, hack. This is part of the hack. So everybody that's wanting to make sure that they're following like 
dotting their T's. Crossing their Lauren, eyes. Lauren's giving y'all permission to just like sit back. Let's just sit it's back and good. relax. It's going to be good, y'all. Okay. So, what it does make it, Donna said it makes it look more organic. Yeah, it really does, especially if it's coming off. But you can see, because I want certain things like just kind of hanging off the edge, and I'll show you how I iron those down later. If I were to do that, I'm going to have to cut these two together, and then I would have to cut this corner together. Yes. Then I'd have four different cuts. When really, if we just place them where we want them with the different sizes, um, it's more, it's a lot easier. And you can even color code them. Like if I wanted to, this one, I didn't want this one pink or green. I wanted it pink. Okay. We know that this pink leaf is going to go here. Then I'm going to bring, you know, this little spiky guy here. And I want him a little bigger right around there. And I want him a lighter green. And then this guy will go, you know, bigger turn. I want him hanging off the mat, but I want this to be a hot pink. So we'll go over here to our hot pink. So this is where you can really see what you want to place where. You can keep doing this. We'll duplicate each one of these. And that way when they cut, all of the pink ones are going to cut together. All of the green ones are going to cut together. Um, so I found personally that it was a lot easier doing it this way than trying to go through and manually say, okay, this one and this one, we're looking at 16 by 10. Okay, that one would fit, but what if it was, what if I had this one down here? I just wanted the top half of it hanging off down here. And then I go to all three and I'm like, nope, it's over 24, but I don't want to resize my leaves. Mm. So manually placing with a pattern like this, I found was easier. I love it. Now there are some instances where you will have to group things together, but we're not going to worry about that today. Um, we do have a video that you all can go watch where we separate uh, the top and the bottom. It is the snowflake one that you did. Yes. Love that one. That one's really good. That one's a really good one. If you do want to group it together and have two separate larger pieces, definitely go watch that one. Um, Tanner did it for boot camp, I think about a year and a half ago. Yeah, 20, it would be the winter of 2021. Yes. Christmas of 2021. Yes. Love so, it. Um, now what we're going to do, now that we... I'm not going to fully design this, but we kind of we have an idea of how we want this placed. Um, you all are kind of getting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the square or my template for my mat because it is larger than anything the Cricut can cut. And now I'm going to go to make it. We do know that we're going to have to do it on the mat. Um, this can be on a 12 by the the saying is definitely going to have to be on a 12 by 24 inch mat. And I think I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to size it down just a smidgen. Probably about right there. Now, on the mat, 12 by 24, perfect. And then I'm just going to move this down around the middle. That way I have more coverage for the flex seal on the top and the bottom. Okay, yeah, more so it doesn't get on there. And now what we're going to do, we're going to click continue, and we're going to head, we're going to go overhead, and I'm going to show you guys how I like to prepare my mats. Look at this. So a lot of design space training people's loving the hacks. Yay! It's going to be super, super fun for you all to see us cutting the freezer paper and then diving in to the doormat Lauren already has prepared today. So it's gonna be perfect. Yes. So one thing that I do want to say, I know y'all probably think that I'm crazy because I have a strong grip mat out here. Why would I use a strong grip mat with freezer paper? So I don't know if maybe our strong grip mat isn't like super strong, I don't know if we've used it so much that it's not super strong. However, our light grip mat is terrible. It's, 
<laughs> it would not keep my freezer paper down, um, so I had to go with a strong grip mat. Now, you can see I do have the shiny side of this freezer paper facing up right now. I just have it here, that way I can cut it. You can cut with the shiny side facing up. Here's another hack. What, I don't know, I don't know what number we're on. But, <laughs> one thing that I did notice, so I tried, to do a doormat that my first doormat idea was with the palm leaves and I wanted it to say welcome to paradise paradise dash ish paradise ish and then underneath it it said maybe not but at least we have margaritas <laughs> <laughs> however another thing that you all need to know is when you are working with these mats that element i had way too many that was way too much text it was not working great it's kind of hard um to get that many words on a mat and be i don't know it's like perfect. really oh yeah i mean let's just talk about that real quick so if you notice on the mat lauren's working with today you're going to see that the phrase is short the font is thick and that's going to allow you to get the best results. Now, I'll tell you that the idea of using like the leaves are really awesome because guess what? Number one, you don't have to mirror any of it. It doesn't yep. matter either way for the leaves. That's so good. Wow. Number two, they're thick, they're chunky, and you're going to get great cuts and great application. But like Lauren, I mean, she was doing a big quote. I was like, wait, there's a lot more room for failure. Yes. So Lauren, let's talk about what side does the freezer paper go down if they have to mirror? Okay. I want you guys to think um, kind of like HTV. The side that you're going to be he or putting down on your mat that's going to adhere to your doormat is this shiny side. So let's go to one. One thing that I found if you do have something with more intricate cuts or you find that your Cricut is not wanting to cut the duller side, because I did run into that, for some reason my Cricut kept dragging over the dull side of the um, freezer paper and it wasn't cutting it properly. Um, I finally got it to cut properly. Um, I think I had to adjust my pressure settings However, I did cut it with the shiny side up and it worked beautifully. You just have to remember to mirror your image. So if you want to just go ahead and cut it as is, the way it comes out of the packaging, shiny side up, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. You just have to always remember to mirror. However, you can take it up off your mat. If you don't want to mirror it, you can put it shiny side down so that's what we're doing now we're taking this up off the mat placing this shiny side down and that way you don't have to mirror it does that make sense yes okay i don't want to confuse you but i also want you guys to know that you can cut both ways like it doesn't have to be one way or the other it's just a matter of mirroring your image love it now, this next step is a very important. When you are putting your freezer paper down, you want to make sure that you get all of those air bubbles out of the way. Get it down really, really good because like I said, your Cricut can snag this material very easily and rip it and it can get frustrating if you do not get the right cuts. Right because it is a lot of cutting and figuring out when it fits on the mat. So you just wanna make sure that number one, you have a clean mat so that there's nothing underneath your material that will snag. And then just make sure it's down on your mat very well. Love it. Congratulations, Jamie Taylor. Welcome to the year membership. Yay! Guys, if you're just tuning in, you have the final few weeks, it's like a week and a half to join. It's like two weeks, the 31st of January two weeks until our price increase. So if you want to get in on the membership, get in while the getting's good, claim your membership. We cannot wait to see you inside of Makers Gonna Learn. The price increase will go in effect February 1st. So use the coupon code BEST 
to grandfather yourself in at our lowest price forever. Woohoo! Okay, so here is where um, I need you guys to, we're going to talk about cut settings for this material. So if you are on an Explore Series machine, you don't have the option for freezer paper. If you have a Maker or a Maker 3, cut it on the freezer paper setting. You do have the option for freezer paper. We are working with an Explore today, so we're going to hop back over. As you can see, I've tried to find freezer paper. Cricut does not have freezer paper for the Explore series, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut it on the parchment paper setting. And then once we have chosen parchment paper, we're doing it on default pressure. We're going to come over here to our Cricut. We're going to load this in. And then once that is ready, we will cut it. Yay. Love it. So does anyone, now would be a great time if anyone has any questions. Yes, um, drop those. Drop your questions so that I can answer your questions while this is cutting. And I'm going to go ahead and get, oops my mini easy press out this is a such a great mini e the mini easy press is perfect for this i've tried to do this project with a large easy press it's doable but it's just not as easy as the mini easy press you're going to love it look at it cutting it's not cutting no oh no hold on is it cutting no but i don't think uh-huh we're gonna pause this. Is you gonna, are you gonna pause? Are you gonna pause? Okay, I don't know if you all can see this. Please don't make this mistake. This blade is like just barely sitting above here and it's not even touching my material. Ooh. When you are replacing your blade, make sure it goes all the way down in there and then clamp it back down because it wasn't, it was not touching. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna go back to Design Space. It's still good on parchment paper. We're gonna put this back in. We're gonna try it again. Love it. We're testing, we're gonna make sure it's all good. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna work this time. Yes. Well, oh, that just happened to me this weekend was not... It was not seated, seated. in the... Yep. yep. It wasn't in the housing. As, it wasn't seated down in the housing like it should have been. So now let's try it again. Now I can hear it cutting. Perfect. Now it's cutting. Um, let's see. We're going to cut this tag off. Yes, so Glenda had a good point. Explore users, you could always look at the parchment paper settings. Um, if you wanted to add a custom material and rename it freezer paper, that way you do have a freezer paper setting, um, you can do that. But you can always, um, always add your own custom materials. Yes. Love that. So, while we're waiting for this to cut, we do have our mini easy press on a heat setting of three. Um, you do have to use the highest heat setting for this. It always, um, it just doesn't work if it's not on three for me. It has to heat it up because this core is hard to heat up. So you, it's kind of, you kind of have to go, it's high, but you have to go slow with it. Okay. Now that that has cut some parts of it, for some reason, didn't cut as well, but it's okay because it's there, but we're just going to come through here and actually, I think I'm going to come here and weed out the letters first. Yeah, it... Weeding this can a lot of times be part of the harder parts. Yeah. Um, and then placing like the inner pieces for letters can also be 
not a challenge, but just take a little extra time. So you wanna be ready for that. Doormats are one of the biggest returns, I would say, in Cricut, but mm -hmm. definitely take a little bit more time. Where have all our true control knives gone? Somebody snatched them. Where are they? I can go grab you one. Okay, go grab me one while I... So I'm just gonna be 100% transparent with you guys. I normally use a maker. Um, so I do have that freezer paper setting on there. Um, I don't always use an Explore unless we are doing a specific project that requires us to use an Explore. So now that I have cut this on the Explore that we have here in the studio, I think that I would probably cut it on a more pressure setting than I would the default pressure setting because it's like it cut it, but it didn't go all the way through in some areas for some reason. And so now what I'm having to do is just come back through here with this true control knife and cut off some of these, like just go through and give it that extra for some of those places that it for some reason did not go all the way through. So I definitely, like I said, I would definitely do this probably with more pressure on that parchment paper if you do have an Explore series machine. See, this is what some places are perfect and then others just, it ain't it, sis. <laughs> What's everybody saying? Oh, uh, we've got a lot of friends here. People are bragging on that mini easy press. It is super, super fun. Um, uh, people are saying this is why it's so appreciative to see real things that just doesn't happen to me. And yes, that definitely happens to us like you mm -hmm. because think about it we you know we all use different machines and on top of that there's different material settings and we have different blades so your blade is going to shift so you got to monitor your blade you got to keep a nice sharp blade in there you know a blade is very similar to an oil change in a car unfortunately the cricket isn't telling us hey you've done a hundred cuts let's go ahead and change out that blade because you so it's in your hands to test and clean a lot of times, y'all, cutting cardstock actually will keep debris on my blade. Mm -hmm. So if you just take it out and clean the debris off of it, it's like little fuzz, then it'll cut better. So there's a lot of things just to be aware of as a cricketer. And what you'll learn the most, if we have a beginner here, I want to talk to you. What you'll learn the most using your machine over and over again, you're going to learn a lot. But the number one thing you're going to learn is when something just isn't working right and you're gonna have that intuition, you're going to know it better, you're gonna be able to pick up on it and figure out what's wrong a lot quicker. Because as a beginner, you don't know what you don't know. That's the value of coming to these shows. That's the value of taking the 30 day challenge. That's the value of watching our YouTube videos. They all work hand in hand together. The most successful students of mine take the membership, get the 30 day challenge, ask the questions in the Facebook group mm -hmm. and show up to these live calls or these live training sessions where they get to see crafts come together in real life and have community. That's how you're gonna get the best success here. So super fun, um, it is awesome. And I'm telling you all, I know you said that people were saying this is why the value in having it live because you all can yeah. see that we struggle as well. Y'all, if y'all could have only seen me <laughs> with this mat before. Yeah, we, Lauren had really wanted to come up with more additional training. If you're here and you're saying, you know, I just want to do a one color training on doormats, it's really easy to do this with one color. Oh, God. When you're adding in as many colors as Lauren did, like I was talking to Alicia this morning, I was like, we should have just cut Lauren from doing this because this is hard. And this, you know, she spent a lot of time and we have a, a what would you call it? Like a, a pile of doormats that are going to the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, we do. We but do. But you've learned a lot in this process. And my favorite, my favorite thing, Lauren, what? is that freezer paper can go bad. I, I think that, that was that one, one of was the most important me. things that I learned through this is that it can go bad. Um, because I, I would have never, never thought that. Never thought that, and my this V kind of messed up a little bit. Y'all can see that, but we'll we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Love it. Okay, we're gonna take out this dot of this eye. 
Okay. Woohoo! Shoo! Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come through and we are going to pull up our stencil, our freezer paper stencil. Yay! I also, so the first time we ever made a stencil with freezer paper for this door mat, um, I'm just gonna be real honest, I thought Tanner and Courtney were crazy. I was like, that's, no, that is <laughs> not gonna stick to anything. I did not believe it. Oh, it but does. It is so much better, personally speaking, I think, that it is so much easier than using vinyl. Yeah. Because I did try to use vinyl, like I said earlier, I did try to use vinyl when um, the freezer paper was not working and it was so hard to get it transferred from the, like taking it off the backer and then trying to get it onto the core and getting it stuck down like it wasn't staying. Yeah, it, unbelievable. And you really have to use, you kind of have to use, I use press and seal instead of regular transfer tape for that. And it was a little easier, but still, oh my gosh, it was so hard. Okay, so once again, mini easy press, heat setting of three. We are just gonna come in, and I think I'm gonna work um, from the center out. And one other thing that you all can do before you start putting it down is if you want to take your measuring tape, and I don't know if this is in the shot, if they can see this, um, but we're just gonna measure from one side of our letters over to the edge. We've got about three and a half. And then from this side, looking at three and a half. So we know we're kind of centered there. And we're just gonna start working our way from the middle portion of this out to the edges. And one thing that um, you do definitely need to do, I don't move my mini press around a lot. I will hold it down in one spot and then pick it up and move it over. Because I feel like for me, that's just been the best. It gets the best edge on it. Like when you get up here, you know, to the top where there's nothing else that you could really mess up. Yeah, there I'm going to start like moving it up. See what I'm saying? But then yes. when we come over here to our letters, like I don't want to move that around a lot because I don't want to bend those, the inside of this in or right here next to the eye. So I'm just going to kind of hold it down yep. to keep it in place. And once you get started with it, it will just kind of go like, yes. you know, once you get that little bit going, you're, you're there, right? Like mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be really easy. And I love, let's all just look at this real quick and notice the thick font. Very, yes. very intentional for you to have a thick font that is going to be easy to stencil, have really crisp lines, and it's going to be really, really awesome. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth, never thought, thought freezer paper was an option for stencils. Uh, oh, the yeah. only option for a core oh, doormat, yeah. if you ask me. Yes, so the heat melts the, um, the wax or the plastic on the backing of the freezer paper into the bristles, which then keeps it on there, but it's not. So one thing that I want you guys to realize is that it's on there very well, but it's not like you have to still, you can't just like think that it's gonna be moving. You have to be easy with it and not really touch it until you're finished. Does that make sense? Right. So we're just gonna start over here with these letters, start up here at the top. Is the shiny side down on the doormat? Yes. Yes, Marina, it is, the, sh the shiny side is down. And that's the key with this, is because that shiny side is plastic coated, that's what's going to give you, that's what's gonna melt like onto the bristles. And it's amazing, like when you pull this up, there's little little to no, I mean, I would say no, like sticky, like there's nothing, like it, there's nothing. Yes. Like when you peel it up, it's flawless. Mm -hmm. So one other thing. The shiny side is down on the doormat. That is what yes. she's activating. Yes, love that. What were you gonna say? I oh, I was just saying, working, <laughs> no. 
I have found that working from your middle point out always works a lot. It's you you have to with these. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to end up um, if you work from this side over something's not going to go right. So when you get that middle point down and then work your way out, it's just so much better. Now, Lauren, I want to ask your opinion because you've now been making them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I kind of get crazy with mine and I want my entire uh, freezer paper to be stuck down. Do you worry about the rest of it? I'm not. You're not. No. You're focused on like the few inches away, right. like just around. So that, that saves a lot of time because if you've watched me do it in the past, I like... I'm like getting the whole thing down, which is a right. little crazy. But now I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. Like, that's super cool. Nope. You do not have to do the whole, I I don't think that you need to do, you really just need to focus on making sure that your edges are down. That way it's really nice and crisp. The rest of it, it's just, I don't think it is as important. But if mm -hmm. you feel like it needs to be down, mm -hmm. I mean, you do it to it. Whichever, but I, I like what you're doing over here. This is really smart. And it does save a lot of time because as you all can see, like it's taken me a minute to get yeah. this down. This is the time consuming part. Like the, you'll notice the Cricut cut that super fast. Yes. The weeding, not too hard, but being able to peel it up and whatnot is super, super great. We actually got this mat at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. Um, I found that they are cheaper at Walmart though. Now, I will say, I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, I can't find the mats that I want to use and things like that. We don't have too much trouble finding the mats. Like, be sure you're looking in the right place. Like, at Hobby Lobby and Michaels, they offer them. Mm -hmm. At Target, they offer them. Walmart, they offer them. So there's quite a bit of potential for you. So it'll be super, super cool. Okay, for some reason that in was not wanting to stick down there in the corner. Let's give it one last little bump of heat. Now you can, if you see that there's a spot that's not wanting to stay down, if you have like little pins, you can come in and pin that down if you want to. I don't think this is gonna be that big of an issue. I don't know if y'all can see, like it's not down as well. It's still down well. But the next thing that I'm going to show you guys, and we probably need to go to one for this one. And I'm going to grab this extra because I don't want overspray. So I'm just going to grab this extra and hold it, have it here since it's going to be so close there to the edge. Make sure you shake up your Flex Seal really well. And the key for this is not coming at it at an angle. Like if I'm standing on this side of the table, I'm not gonna stand back here and spray it this way. You really wanna try your best to spray it from the top down because if there are like little areas in your stencil that for some reason didn't stick down as well, if you're coming at it at an angle, there's a better chance of that flex seal going under it and kind of giving you like a blowout effect. Whereas if you're coming from this top down, there's a lot less of a chance of that happening. So what we're going to do, we're just going to come in from the top. We're just going to... Look at that. She's given a little spurt. Yep. It's a lot easier if you... Yep. Small spurts. You're probably going to have to keep shaking. Then we're just going to move this up here. Make sure I don't get any overspray up there. Sorry, I don't mean to, I don't, not mean to cover that up if you were still on one. I just want you guys to see. And look, she's getting close to that edge. Dun, 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 dun. And now I'm just going to move this back over here to the side. And you all can see the overspray that I did get on, go overhead. You can see the overspray that I did get. If I would not have covered that top part up, that would have been on um, my other thing. So I actually got some on the side. So I'm going to turn it over so that that flex seal does not touch Smart. my mat. We're just going to lay that down here, shake it one more time. Hold this down. Look at that. And that is it. Now, how long are you giving for, for the flex seal to like set in? Like it's pretty impressive, right? Like, yeah, I mean, we're going to pull it up now. Look at that. Look at that. 
You do need to be careful when you pull it up because there may be some excess on your paper that you could possibly drip onto your mat. So be careful with that, but we're just popping that bad boy off and whoa. 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 And honestly, you could be done there. Yeah. You really could be done there. It's amazing. Like that's all you have to do. Now, if you wanted to, I would let this sit um, probably 24 hours and then come back in if you wanted to give it an extra layer of protection and do the Flex Seal Clear. You don't have to though with the black Flex Seal. It's so awesome. You It wears very nicely. Um, so you don't have to. That's just going to be a choice. But now let's move this bad boy out of the way and let's quickly talk about how we can add color with acrylic paint if you want to. Now, I know we're running a little close to time and I do want to be very aware of your all's time. So I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do one um, leaf and I'm actually gonna do it to where it kinda hangs off the corner so that you all can see what I'm talking about by placing these individually. So, let me move my mat so you guys can see this. So Donna asked how long it takes to dry. Donna, it is pretty set, I would say, within 10 to 15 minutes in our experience. Lauren, would you agree? Um, yeah, I mean, I would just do a finger test, like tap your finger on yeah. it. As far as drying, you want it to dry to the touch, but you also want to let it cure before you give it to someone yes. or before you take it outside to start using it, okay? So... Just keep that in mind. Now, I do already have my leaves pre-cut, just so you all are, are, are aware of that. If you are cutting your leaves, like when we place them, you would just cut them based on the color, and then you can do one color at a time. You can go back and reference back to your design in Design Space and see where exactly you put them and iron them down and do them each color at a time. But this is how, what I have found um, works best when you are wanting to add color and use acrylic paint. Um, so as you can see, I cut out the leaves individually so that it's just the stencil by itself. And now what I'm going to do, same technique as before, except I'm going to hang this off the edge here so that you all can see how I did that. Let me make sure so Can see that, how you're not having to worry about all of the, you know, specific placement like she was talking about when we were on Design Space and we yes. had that combo. This is what she's meaning. Like you can manually place it. Yes. Like the old fashioned way. <laughs> yes. This is honestly um, out of, because I did try to do like this bottom half. I did try to do it all one layer and it was a lot harder bringing it off the mat and doing all of this stuff. Whereas I could just cut them out individually and place them um, wherever I wanted. Um, so what we're gonna do, somebody asked, can you add acrylic paint over the black flex seal? Um, Tracy, I don't, this is like, I don't know if you all can see, but like my finger is not going in that flex it's, seal. It's like you can see there. here, like it'll go down into the mat here. But y'all, that Flex Seal, it is not moving. I personally think that the acrylic paint would just sit on top of that and probably, I don't know. I don't know that it would look the best. Right. Um, but anyway, what we're doing, if you do want, like I said, if you want to add color, um, we're going to be doing that with acrylic paint. One thing that I do want to talk to you about, um, the acrylic paint is not outdoor paint. We're just using the... Uh, folk art or the Americana from the small tubes of it, tubes of it from craft stores. And then what we're going to do after that is I'm going to take some flex seal and I'm just going to cover this side of, or I'm going to cut, you would cover the whole mat. Um, these have dried a few days. So once it cures and dries, then you would come back in with the clear flex seal and coat it all so that the whole mat has a really good, um, like it has coverage on it. Yeah. Somebody did ask about um, shipping. So yes. while once again, while we are, I'm going to be, let's bring this back in the shot so you guys can see. We're doing this off the, off the corner. Once again, heat setting of three. 
And while I'm doing this, we can talk about what we would do for shipping. Now, I have two ideas for y'all with shipping. There's two different ways to go about this. Number one, I like to leverage the people that I know, right? How much, I mean, Lauren, if you don't know something, what's the best way to do it? You use your resources. Mm -hmm. So for me, do you all want to know who my favorite go-to person for shipping is? It is my local UPS store. Now, let me tell you why. My local UPS store, it's their job to ship stuff out. And if you know anything about the UPS, the local, like the small UPS stores, those are franchised and they earn commission off of shipping things for you, which mm -hmm. is amazing. They are very hands-on. I go to them all the time. The owner is named Patty. Shout out to Patty. I go to her all the time. I'm like, hey, how, how do I ship this? And she will break down and say, Tanner, you could put it in a box and it would be this much. Or I've also seen people roll these up in like wrap them with mm -hmm. really thick plastic mm -hmm. and you can ship it out that way. What you want to know about shipping is there's a few components, the size and the weight. That is all shipping breaks down to size and weight. If you are shipping a doormat in a box that is, you know, fit to size or had a custom box made, things like that, that can be more expensive. But you can roll these up and tightly wrap it and then take it and ship it um, and be able to weigh it and things like that for price. There's a few different ways to tackle it. So I would encourage y'all to leverage your local um, vendors to get opinions. They will give you so much information. It's like if you need to do a craft, who do you want to consult? You want to consult the best people that do crafts. For us in shipping, you want to consult who you know and have local resources for the best in shipping. People will give different ideas and it's super, super fun. Right. Love it. Yes, Tina, on Amazon, the cheapest mat, they do, Amazon is not the place to buy these core door mats, in no, my opinion. No, Amazon is not the num the cheapest. No, not the cheapest. One other thing I want to talk to you guys about is the color of your paint. Um, you have to be very um, conscious of the color of paint that you're using. A lot of times the lighter color paints won't translate as well as a darker color on these doormats because you have to think of the color we like we're already working with a brown base we're not working with a white base we're working with a brown base so what's going to show up best it's going to be a darker color yes so once you have chosen your colors we have ironed this down it's here we've got it hanging off the edge um do we want to go melon pink or green forest green Ooh. You can't, you ever go wrong with forest green. Okay, we'll go forest green. <laughs> and I also want to let y'all know, the cardboard tubes are very underrated. So you can get a cardboard tube, mm -hmm. think of it similar to like what you'd put a poster in back in right. the day. Uh -huh. They make them to where you can roll your doormat up and ship it. So if you don't want to, you know, doing the thicker plastic and building your own container can be hard. But if you get in a kick where you're selling a lot of these, Etsy's doing well for you. I've seen a lot of them, and I've received a lot of them in the cardboard tubes. So, great idea. Okay. Don't do like I do and open the paint all over your <laughs> fingers. Now I'm going to have a green oh, fingernail. That's so funny. It's okay. So, what yes. we're going to do, I've shaken my paint up. Yes, this is just the Americana um, acrylic paint. I'm sure there are all kinds of, like, other outdoor paints. I saw somebody say something about patio paints. Really and truly, you all can play around and... Um, you can choose which one. You can practice with different things. Um, see which one works best for you. This is just what we like to do. Uh, once again, there's not one right or wrong way. There's all kinds of different ways you can do things. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to put a pretty generous amount of paint around my stencil, but yet not touching my stencil, okay? So we're going to have a generous amount of paint. I know y'all are going to think, oh my gosh, that's so much paint. <laughs> but to get a really good crisper line on this, um, I do like to have a little bit more paint. Another thing that I discovered when doing these, using your sponge brush and having it damp, for some reason for me, worked a little bit better than working with a dry sponge brush brush so I have dampened my brush just a little bit and all I'm going to do is come in here and from the top we're going to tap this down 
into the doormat. Okay. Lauren is not wasting any time. Traditionally, when I would teach this, I would never put the acrylic paint straight on the mat. So if anyone else is like, wow, that's me right now. <laughs> because she said, I would do two or three coats, y'all. If you've ever been here, if you, I mean, if you are an old time OG 2018, 2019 viewer of Makers Learn, I would do a live stream like this. Now, granted, we have been live for an hour and almost 20 minutes, but um, my, I've, I've done one of these for two hours because you need so many coats of the acrylic paint. So Lauren just eliminated all of that. So kudos to Lauren. She is here to win it quickly. <laughs> Way yes. faster than traditionally for Tanner. Well, um, I mean, I... I love it. And, okay, so this one came up just a little bit. It's okay. We're tapping from the top. So, you know what? It ain't that big of a deal. If it comes up, it's all good. We're just going to keep tapping and tap, tap, tap. And then you can see if you need paint anywhere else, if you want to add any more. We're coming over here in this corner, tapping that a little bit more. Love that. Love it, love it, love it. And then now, Lauren, what do you think? Boom, boom. Look now, at that. Now, what do you think about chalk paint? Chalk paint's very thick. Chalk paint, in my opinion, is too, like it wouldn't seep in at all. Like chalk paint is very like. Mm, yeah, I don't. I would say proceed with caution on chalk paint. I like the idea of it. I don't think it would work long term. So when I tell you that I, these doormats work, I have had these doormats for many moons, many mm -hmm. days, many years, and we love them. You are going to have an amazing experience using this. I would sell this. I believe in this, and it's so good. And if any of you are considering in our circle and you, like, want to go all in on your craft business, let me know in the comments if you need a deal. It's still 50% off, but our team is going to be updating that. They're just waiting for my green light, and I wanted to make sure everybody that wants an inner circle are in. So super fun. We had our first coaching call and it was amazing. If you were there, you know, it was amazing. And Zoom has been so mean to me. I have no idea what to do about it. What do you mean it's been mean to you? I downloaded the video and it wasn't a oh, hour yeah. video. It was a five hour video. Oh yeah. And our team, our team or Zoom's team hasn't given me a reason. So I'm very upset. So. You know what? I said I was only going to do one, but I think we're going to do one more. Oh, okay. Unless we want to be done. <laughs> we might need to be done. Okay, let's just be done. So anyway, <laughs> once you finish, I'll bring Lauren, this over. Lauren wants to make doormats. Uh, I mean, no, I don't. they're really fun. They are fun. It's just a labor of love. It's a lot um, longer of a project. It is a lot longer of a project, so be prepared for that. Yes. Um, once you have finished, if you're adding color, I definitely recommend coating that acrylic paint with the clear flex seal. Like I said, that's just going to give you that would extra layer Would you do layer a coat of, over the entire thing so it's all even? I would do it over everything. And I would mat. take it outside. Mm -hmm. I would coat the whole mat so that the whole mat stays nice and yes. um, protected. Yes. One other thing that I did discover through this um, is that a lot of times I was trying to figure out, I was, because there are some people that make some absolutely beautiful yeah. full color mats. And I was bound and determined to figure out how do you do that? Love how it. do they make those? I want to know because I want to do it. I think I figured it out. They use an airbrush <gasps> gun. And that's something do that... Do we need one? <laughs> well, you know I love doing airbrush makeup. I love working with an airbrush gun, personally. But that was also something that I know you all don't have access How to much necessarily. Um, I don't know about just a regular airbrush gun. I know the like a higher quality makeup airbrush gun, you're looking at like two, three hundred dollars. So I don't know about a regular airbrush gun. You can get like a cheaper yeah. compressor, yeah. things like that. The compressors are really the biggest thing with those. Um, but it was um, I did notice that a lot of people who are doing the full color um, are using airbrush guns, and Ooh. I that's and I'm pretty sure they're coating them with Flex Seal afterwards yeah. as well to seal them. Yeah. Um, but that's something if you do have an airbrush gun, you can yeah. try it out, test it out. I love it. That's super fun. I mean, Flex Seal has really opened the door for us to make the best quality um, things, and it's super fun. If you do the whole mat, do you still use it as a doormat to clean feet, Kathy? Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, the doormat is go work. Still, it's go function. It's gonna be stiffer and actually it'll last longer. Mm -hmm. Especially like, I don't know, at my house, I feel like, at least in East Tennessee with all the different seasons and the wet, like doormats only last like six months around here. I will say Flex Seal lasts longer than the ones you buy at the craft store or the ones you buy at like your home improvement and they really you know, do. Walmart, Target. The ones that you buy at Target don't last more than like six months for me until I'm like, whoa, I gotta get a new doormat. But since having Flex Seal ones, like they're they're amazing. Yeah. I really, really enjoy Everybody's, them. Everybody's, there's a lot of people that says they have airbrush guns. Somebody said a $30 well, we one don't. at Harbor Freight. Let's get it. I mean, that'd be fun. I'll try it. I am I love working I have with airbrush so many guns. Is it like a, it's not a, like a paint sprayer, right? No, so an airbrush gun, a paint sprayer sprays in one, mm -hmm. like this direction. Mm -hmm. You go across this way. An airbrush gun has more of a, you can get the different tips and go, like, Are we talking about, them. like, the ones? Like where you would airbrush a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh. That kind of airbrush gun. That's cool. Yes. I need to try that. I want to, I loved getting those on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we had so many growing up. Being this Me close too. to Gatlinburg. How could you not Myrtle have Beach? One? Oh my God! That the was... dolphins. <laughs> That's how you knew you went on vacation. I know. Oh my God! If you came back with your braided hair, yeah. and then you wouldn't have come I... back with braided hair. But no, you, know. you could get a braid. Yeah, yeah, that's so fun. That's fun. Okay, thinking maybe we should pre-coat mats with clear flex. So honestly, Elizabeth, you totally could. Some people are like, well, what if we did the flex seal, then did the paint? I would not do that. The uh -uh. acrylic paint with your feet literally will like come off. So yeah. it's always regular paint, then the sealer to seal it all and protect it. Yeah. Um, it is I super, super fun. I don't think pre-coating um, would really work with the clear, yeah. just because like I said, with the black, like you're not penetrating that yes, portion of exactly, the mat. Exactly. So I think, you know, just coating it afterwards. And it doesn't have to be a heavy coat. It can be a right. light coat. Right. And I still think, and if you wanted to do a heavier coat on the acrylic paint and not really do a heavy coat on the whole thing, yes. that would work as well. I love it. Well, y'all, here's what you need to know. They're putting in a new AC unit, so our camera's shaking. <laughs> They're on the roof. <laughs> was, okay. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, we do want to let y'all know, it is the final. You have until January. 31st to get in on the best deal of the not year over the past five years this is the mm -hmm. lowest price it'll have ever been yeah our price increase is happening on february 1 yep and we don't want you to miss out you have this time to prepare and literally y'all are shaking like are y'all shaking because the process like yeah, the price <laughs> is so good like let me know um but the price is going up and i don't want you to miss out so here's what you need to know you can become a monthly member for $19.99 a month or you can go yearly and save over a hundred plus dollars a year when you go annual and you're gonna have that price for every year you stay a member. So February 1, the price increase is gonna take into effect and you're gonna miss out on all of that savings if you don't get in by January 31st. If you're already a member, you already, like Lauren said, you're done. You're already in, you're you good. It. You're gonna keep that price and it is super, super fun. Um, but yeah, you've gotta get in while the getting is good. If you need anything, we are here to support you. Questions about membership, check it out. Sadie's dropping you the link. I can see it right now. So click over there, see everything you get being a member. If you're ready to go annual, use that coupon code BEST. And when you do, we're gonna send you a free gift, um, which is a Cricut reference guide and a special little secret gift. So that's just from us to you, just to say thank you for getting in. And if you're already a member, you are good. If you didn't get the free gift and you're a year member, let us know. And it's super fun. Um, I do think Yasmin said that I had linked the Krylon Black. I think I might have done the uh, supply list probably right before I realized that the um, <laughs> the the spray paint was not going to work. So I will add we'll the fix it. we'll fix it and we'll love add the it. flex seal in the link below for you all. That's awesome. You guys are going to love it. And thanks for being here. We are so excited. Our podcast studio. Is wrapping up yep we are getting all of that ready to go and soon you're gonna have so much new content con to consume we will have a big launch party when the podcast goes live yes so don't worry like where's where you go consume it it's gonna be on youtube it's gonna be on spotify it's gonna be on apple yep. wherever you consume podcast you can listen so we're gonna have worry. the video version of it on heck yeah here on youtube wait so. till you see our new studio Ooh. Ooh, it's gonna be good can't wait to see you